Andrew Tate proves hypergamy is, is a real thing. I mean, we all know hypergamy is a real thing. But if anybody's in doubt, if any of these women out here, these feminists out here who are, you know, they claim, oh, true love, blah, 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 you know, but they want their equality, blah, blah, blah. Even they can't argue with Andrew Tate's results. Now, is Andrew Tate a good guy? Is he a moral person? Absolutely not. Um, and when I say good guy, I mean is he good in the sense that he's righteous, right? Is is, is he, um, you know, a law-abiding righteous person? Obviously not, right? The guy, anyway, we don't need to get into that, but there's proof. There's proof of that. I'm not anti-Andrew Tate, but I've, you know, been critical of his congruency as far as him claiming that he's moral and other people are not moral that's just bollocks as the as the english would say uh and that's just obvious if you, if you <laughs> follow his story arc or you know his his stories don't don't align with that but he is a successful man um whether his success is overblown and he's lying about his actual net worth etc doesn't matter i mean he's he's a multimillionaire at least got a mansion you know at least got some cars some 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 very expensive cars at least very he's in very good shape very mentally um astute very mentally sharp great orator has confidence he's tall got tattoos everything he checks off every single box and i believe he knows that he checks off every single box he knows darn well what women want and he has um procured that image procured that lifestyle and he's reaping the benefits is andrew tate a role model one thousand percent no he's not he's he's like dan bilzerian he, you know, he, he's like Dan Balzerian 2.0, or Dan Bills. He's the alternative to Dan Balzerian. He's basically just Dan Balzerian in in a, in a different person's body, right? He works out. He smokes cigars. He shoots guns. He drives fast cars. He promotes that image, and he does it on purpose. That's that's the Dan Balzerian playbook. People. In the last, I'd say at least five years, maybe six, seven, eight years, have started to forget about Dan Balzerian. Dan Balzerian was the guy to first do it. Dan Balzerian was Andrew Tate before Andrew Tate. Except Andrew Tate happens to be very intelligent. I don't think Dan Balzerian is as intelligent as Andrew Tate, nor do I think he cares to be. I think Dan Balzerian is perfectly fine with his hedonistic lifestyle and you know the life that he lives he doesn't feel the need to go out he doesn't have the arrogance i i should say really to go out and act like he's mother Teresa. you know act like he's trying to save the world that's andrew tate's ego right that's his ego but it's also part of his selling point it's also part of what makes him money it's part of his 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 brand and he knows that. And is he genuine in that? I'd say maybe 15%, maybe 20%. Most of it's about money. Most of it's about building up his image as this great guy, which is part of hypergamy. If you you can get by being Dan Balzerian and, and, and sleep with supermodels, but I would argue that Andrew Tate gets better women than Dan Balzerian. And I would argue that Andrew Tate gets better women more willingly than Dan Belzerian. Dan Belzerian isn't the most intelligent guy. He's not the most well-spoken guy. He's not the most well-rounded guy. He's kind of aloof, closeted a little bit. He doesn't have the type of charisma that Andrew Tate has. He just doesn't. It's just it, You can just tell by watching him. He does not have charisma. The guy's, the guy's kind of a rock. He's a very smooth rock. Andrew Tate... Is multifaceted. He's got lots of charisma. This is what women want. Women want a guy like that. Women want a guy who can 
talk their pants off. Women want a guy who can joke. Women want a guy who is great at push-pull method. Uh, women want a guy who's great at getting into their mentality. Women just love that. So Andrew Tate checks off all the boxes, even more so than Dan Belzerian. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that or excuse me, I would say that there probably would be no Andrew Tate if it wasn't for Dan Balzarian. Andrew Tate took Dan Balzarian's playbook and he upped, he upped the he 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 took it to another level because of who he is and his person. So he's tall, muscular, athletic, a champion, a real champion kickboxer, not a phony Navy SEAL like Dan Balzarian postured himself to be. So he's got everything. He's got the looks. He's got the money. He's got the status. He's got the accolades and the accomplishments. Women go crazy for a guy like that. It proves hypergamy is real, particularly in the backdrop of his uh, controversies, right? In spite of his controversies, Andrew Tate is still taking women down. He's still probably one of the biggest womanizers out there. Who knows? You know, he's he's at least got a harem of women, and and it's not like Dan. I believe Dan Bilzerian pays for his women. I for the most part, uh, I, I I yes, there's part of clout that goes along with Dan Bilzerian and his fame, but he's dropped off. He's dropped off a lot. Women know who Dan Bilzerian is. You know. Even though he's not in the news every five minutes like Andrew Tate, women still know who Dan Belzerian is. Women are not out here dumb. They know who the famous guys are from five years ago, from ten years ago. And they're still going to chase those guys. But at the same time, if a guy doesn't have a magnetic personality, if a guy doesn't have charm, if he's not endearing, if he's not... um, If he doesn't have those social charismatic qualities then women aren't gonna get attached they're not going to get um you know uh feelings for dan belzerian they might sleep with him but he's gonna get a lesser quality woman he's gonna get a more shallow type of woman he's gonna get a more vapid type of woman i would bet money that andrew tate gets women that are way hotter and way just, just, you know, just hotter, but also more interesting than the type of women that that Dan Bilzerian gets, because, you know, you like attracts like. You, if you are charismatic, you you got a you you know you at least seem like you got a good heart. Now I'm not going to sit here and dog on Andrew Tate and be like, oh, the guy's got a bad heart. You know, he probably does have a decent heart, but you can you can have a decent heart and be a good person and still be corrupted or in the process of 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 corruption if that makes sense everyone out here is is in the process of something right particularly you know in in our heart in our personal growth we can grow and you know we're like plants you know our souls and our hearts are like plants if you grow you know if you if you put a plant in a certain environment and feed it a certain type of food it's going to grow a certain type of way it's going to i mean yes it has the dna of that plant but, you know, nature versus nurture, environment, adaptation, right? All that. So, anyway, I, you know, I say that to say that, uh, I say that to say, you know, that Andrew Tate is a multifaceted, multifarious type of guy who has layers. There's layers to Andrew Tate. I do believe that he's got a good heart and he cares about people and things like that somewhat. But he's a case study in psychology. I think he's he's got sociopathic tendencies. Tendencies. I think that he is a very greedy person. He's very hedonistic, very given over to his lusts. But he tries to. Be, he's all about balance and the and the yin and the yang. He balances all that out with meditation and discipline. You know, but he's he's living the life. These guys, he, him and his brother, they wanted to be rich and famous. I know they did, and that's why they, they you know, they got on those shows, and then they wanted the accolades. So they they kind of are just you know, in, in a sense, they're cookie cutter, alpha male type guys, 
who are very intelligent and calculated and know exactly what they're doing and know what they want. And it's an interesting case study in psychology because alongside them being so ambitious and knowing what they want and getting what they want, which, you know, knowing what you want and getting what you want are two different things. And they were able to do it up until now, so far. But they're a case study in, because not only did they do that, but they also have <laughs> criminal, <laughs> criminal tendencies there. I mean, they, they, I, I mean, I'm sorry to say they have a crime kind of, uh, you know, setup going on. It, it really seems that way, you know, now I could be wrong and, and the charges could be, could be fabricated, but I think that, you know, the lover boy method and, and what he did to garnish those, those webcam girls was immoral to say the least, probably unlawful to say the most. He probably took their money, like he said he did in those videos, and that's just my opinion. I don't know for sure, but it sure seems like and sounds like he did. And, you know, he, 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 you know, if you, if you understand Andrew Tate and you watch his stuff at length and you put it all together, you realize, oh, his dad, he's, he's told these stories. His dad hung out with pimps. Well, what does that mean? Pimps are highly influential, highly charismatic type of people. You know, I've met pimps and, and I've been, I've been around them at parties and sometimes you meet them on the street, you know, if you go out and about in the right places and they're very charismatic and they'll talk to you they're very they've got this kind of human charm and they're, and they're like foxes or like human foxes where they can charm the pants off of anybody anybody and they'll talk to anybody they'll talk to weird old ladies or the you know weird people you know you know they'll talk to anybody and it it, it, it it's a game to them you know uh uh, the the vernacular and the verbology that the uh, I don't know if that's a word but you know they call it they call it game they got game and 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 that's the term game really comes from pimping you know the you know the poor guys pickup artists they talk you know they use the word game and people use game but but it really comes back to pimping is it all you know the first gamers the first players were pimps. Because they they would they went out there and they gamed women and they taught and they had they had to be adept at their, you know, uh, vernacular and how they talked and their and the way they they charmed people. So Andrew Tate's dad was a brilliant guy. He was a chess grandmaster, which means he's very highly intelligent, very highly calculated. I think he was in the special services, if not. CIA or something I'm, I might be wrong about that but I know he was in the armed services or the military I should say um, at any rate he, he, he was a combination of disciplined intelligence and then if you combine the fact with that he had friends who were pimps well what does that tell you and he was also I believe a womanizer to some extent I know he, he went out I'm pretty sure he went out on Andrew Tate's mother anyway that's just the backstory of uh, you know of all that but if you put that together you can tell why is Andrew Tate basically a pimp because he was influenced by these pimps, right? I bet you his dad brought the pimps around Andrew and Tristan and they were influenced and they thought that was cool. And, and there is a kind of lore and a kind of allure to the pimp game. And, you know, I grew up listening to Bay Area rap, which is a lot of pimp rap and stuff. And, and it's, it's enticing. It, it, it's, it's romantic even. There's something about it, particularly for, particularly for men, is like, oh, these guys get women. You know, it's there's kind of this. Um, I don't know how to put it, but there's a there, there's a kind of a, you know glorification in it. There's a kind of like self glorification, like yeah, I got this woman to do anything for me, and it's all because of my game and my confidence and my charisma. And so Andrew Tate kind of embodies that, even though. A, you know a large percentage of his life was was in England and then you know Indiana's the you know I think he's from he's from Indiana or something where he was born in the USA which is the you know, basically the middle of nowhere but it doesn't matter there's still there's pimps everywhere there's there's that influence everywhere it's mainstream people are still kind of enamored with that lifestyle it's 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 a part of American culture it's a part of our uh, media 
you know, again, whether it's rap music or whether it's, you know, movies or in books or, you know, you got pimps on YouTube now. It's crazy. And you can watch these guys' stories, et cetera, et cetera. And it's nothing necessarily to be glorified. Um, I'm, you know, being red-pilled, I'm more like, well, you know, I don't view prostitution necessarily as human trafficking as much as I do it being a joint venture between the, the prostitute and the pimp a team I would say so to me it's 50-50 unless yeah unless she's underage that's trafficking right yeah that's something that's not uh, not 50-50 not normal but if she's uh, you know a grown adult and that's what she chose to do now Yes, there's intimidation involved, and yes, there's there, there's the, you know, there could be physical force, et cetera, et cetera. In those type of situations, I would say, yeah, that's trafficking because if it's if, if she's being forced to do something she doesn't want to do, it, even though she might thought she wanted to do it at some point, et cetera, you know, it can get crazy. It can get. I mean, it's just a horrible thing. It's a. It's why it's, it's why it's outlawed. That's why it's criminal because it's just a horrible situation but I, I you know being red pilled I do think a lot of women get into it because you know I don't know they want to make a lot of money and for some reason they're just damaged but I mean the pimps are damaged too it's two damaged people coming together to start a business you know and, and I don't think it's honestly I don't think it's too far off from what a lot of these women are doing on OnlyFans or what a lot of these women are doing in porn and cam girls it's all sex work it's part of that and many people want sex work to be legalized etc and i've i've bounced that question around myself you know like is sex work something that might help men because men are so um you know hard up for sex that that you know they might you know it might really affect their lives or cause depression it might help them you know if they could see a prostitute if you know if they legalize it i've bounced that around you know, you know, in my mind, um, ultimately, you know, ideally, you, you know, you have to say ideally, it would be nice if men could just get married and the whole problem of, you know, whole problem of sex would be solved that way. But it's such a lust is such a, it's such a black hole, man. And it affects everything. And it's like, it's such a, a, a quicksand, muddy, deep swamp of, despair and and maybe there's some pleasure there sure yeah there's some pleasure there in lust but it's also just a it's a leech and it'll suck your life you know so anybody who's involved in that is not moral just objectively just cut and dry black and white you're not moral if you're involved in that whether you're on the pimping side or whether you're you know the female prostituting yourself side or whether you're a cam girl or whether you're a porn girl or whether you're a only fans girl or whether you're at the bar just just looking to get free drinks if you're pimping yourself out using your sexuality and even it, it extends to marriage even a lot of women out here are slanging slanging sex they're 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 luring men in with sex so they can get what they want in a marriage or so they can get what they want in a relationship and i have a lot of more respect for a woman who's like yeah i just want to have sex but i'm not trying to use sex you know, to get what I want, I have some, I have an inkling, I have, I have some respect for women who are at least like that, and, and they work hard on their own, and, and, you know, they're like, all right, you know, but I like sex, and I want to have sex, that's still a moral, I'm not saying that's not a moral, but I have more respect for that than, than so many women out here who are using sex as a lure, right, uh, to get what they want, selling themselves, commoditizing themselves, turning themselves into a product, which is, it's, it's one form of prostitution or another. And the overt forms, such as, like I said, you know, literal prostitution, street walkers, or cam girls, or porn girls, all those forms are, um, not moral, and they're not a good way to live. So if you look at Andrew Tate, you can't say that he's, on the up and up he has admitted and told everyone how he made all his money he's just been blatantly forthcoming with that he told everybody he said yes i was a cam girl basically uh, I, I was a cam girl 
a business owner, right? I am, I am a, I am a pimp. Essentially, is what he's saying, and and, and it's astounding to me. It boggles my mind how the guy can say that, and you know, and then a couple of years later be like, I'm moral and this, that, and the third. It's like, okay, well then give all your money back. If you're a Muslim now and you follow God, well, give all your money back. You're not going to do that. You got ill-gotten gains, right? You and you're still enjoying your hedonistic lifestyle. You're still enjoying all all your riches. Now I'm not going to sit here and judge the guy necessarily. I'm not trying to condemn him or judge him, but it's like let's just call a spade a spade and be obvious with what he really is doing, and that's um, you know he's 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 living the high life off of being a pimp sorry is what it is and and so he's a case study in um just you know psychology how someone can be so contradictory but so confident and even arrogant in their own abilities while actually looking stupid because you, you he, the guy looks stupid really for him to say i'm moral this it's like no, you're not moral, and, and you got your money by being immoral, and just admit it. Say, you know what, how I got my money was not moral. You know, I'd like to be a moral person, but I have to admit that I made I made money the wrong way. And, and, and I don't want anybody to follow my path, or I don't, I don't consider myself a role model in that sense. You know, I'd like to speak well, and, you know, for, you know, about men in the, in the, in the manosphere, in the red pill, etc. I'd like, I'd like to help men. But at the same time, I have to admit that that I didn't make my money honestly. I didn't make my money morally. I did it by being a part of the system that harms men. Because men are, make no mistake, men who watch porn, men who are um, adherent to, to cam girls or only fans, men who are customers to those type of scenarios these men are depressed these men are not happy these men want girlfriends these men want sex and you are a proponent of you know causing them to 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 go down that lust that that lust uh road and which 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 really leads nowhere because these are simp men and i'm sure he figured well these guys are going to pay anyways i mean they might as well pay my company as opposed to another company and that's one way to look at it that's one way to dodge responsibility dodge accountability dodge uh your conscience right the difference between right and wrong right um but it just boggles my mind that the guy can you know uh on the one hand be like oh yeah i made all my money being a being a uh being a pimp, right, for uh, for cam girls, but I'm still a moral guy, and I and I pursue a law, and, and it, like it's just like who takes that? Who takes this guy seriously? He's a massive hypocrite. Now he does say some brilliant stuff. He does say some very insightful stuff, but I don't think anything Andrew Tate says is um, necessarily new or groundbreaking. I think he's very well read. I think he's he he, he gets his ideas. And, and he's able to articulate and reiterate ideas that he's read from other people, which is great. Uh, and it's fine and, and it's helpful in a way, you know. Um, so it's interesting because here you got this guy who's got, he checks off all the boxes, charismatic, confident, well-spoken, uh, tall, in shape, lots of money. Women want him, so he's got pre-selection down. You know, I mean, he's got everything a woman wants, and he he makes women salivate, right? He makes he makes women wet. Uh, but then he's also a guy who's brashly outspoken against modern feminism, and he's also a guy who has admitted to taking advantage of women financially, and and he's also an admitted pimp. So it's like, even ironically, even that. Is, is attractive to women because it's the danger aspect. Oh, he's been to jail. Oh, he's he takes risks. And so there's, for some reason, women out here are in, very interested in men who, who, you know, dodge dodge laws, 
they like it. It turns them on. It's oh, it's exciting. He's dangerous. Now there's another aspect. He's not safe. Safe is boring. Safe is unattractive. He's not safe either. He's a dangerous man, right? So when I hear the guy speak, I hear a lot of, um, you know, it's interesting because like I said, it's a case study. It's psychology. I hear a lot of arrogance. I hear a lot of, you know, narcissism, a lot of sociopathic talk because how can you on the one hand be honest with yourself and honest with everybody else when we can all see your history we can all see your your exploits we know that you're a pimp we know that you admitted to, to stealing money you taught men how to steal money from women you taught men how to fraud women out of their money you talked about how to fraud you talked about money laundering how to how to you know, fraud the government. You talked about bribes, bribing your government, etc. So it's really astounding to me that he can sit there. <laughs> but it's a case study in hypergamy. It really is. At the end of the day, it's a case study in hypergamy because you're like, wow, this guy checks off every single box aside from the he's a safe, righteous, honest, loyal guy. He's not. He's he's non-monogamous. He's he, he's polyamorous. He's got multiple kids from, as far as I know, as far as from what he said, he's got children from different women. Uh, he's got, he probably got a harem in addition to his wives. He's probably got more women. So the man is by all means living a highly immoral life, a highly licentious life, a highly hedonistic life, highly selfish life, a highly arrogant life, and even a criminal life. And he has the audacity to brandish his brand, right? To brandish his brand, uh, the Tate brand, in the sense that he is putting himself out there like he's just, he, he's a helper of humanity. He's a helper of men. Now, objectively, he says some very helpful stuff at times. Objectively, he says some very insightful stuff at times, which can help men. But you also got to, you know, practice what you preach and you got to not just talk the talk, but you got to walk the walk. I don't believe he has traditional values. I don't believe he's really a man of God like he says, which is unless he's trying to turn over a new leaf at the same time, you know, but there's something to be said for honesty. And so, like I said earlier, I would just say, if you're really going to become a man of God, just, just tell the truth. Start telling the truth. Yeah, man, I took advantage of people and I'm not a role model and I, and I made my money immorally and I've lived a hedonistic lifestyle and I've promoted a hedonistic lifestyle and I repent. You know, if we're, if we're really talking about God and if we're talking about the Bible, that's what it really is. Is that's what repentance is? Is admitting you're wrong and making a turn, making a change, and part of that is admitting to yourself and, if need be, to other people that you have not been truthful or that you have not been, um, you know, honest or or or, or, or righteous. And if you're really a man of God, you wouldn't have that many wives. If you're really a man of God and you really read the Bible, you're supposed to only have one wife. You're supposed to only, you know, you know, uh, love one person and have one family. And that's the real expression of godliness. But if you have multiple wives and you have multiple harems of women, I, he's probably not even married, actually. He just has a bunch of women that he has kids with. I'm sorry, that's not moral according to the Bible. And you could argue that, oh, you know, in the Old Testament they had concubines and blah, blah, blah. Well, actually, if you really study the Old, the, the Old Testament, what a concubine is not necessarily, a, you know, just another wife. They did have multiple wives, but a lot of times they had concubines. And concubines was more like a female slave. And it was possible for the guys to sleep with the female slaves. But it wasn't necessarily permissible by God. That, that, that was not... You know, there are some things that are like, maybe they, just because something happened doesn't mean that it was, it was ordained by God or that's how God wanted it to be, right? Just because something happened, you know, in, in the Old Testament doesn't mean that it, you know, like the, a lot of times the Old Testament just, just
just says stuff. It just says stuff point blank. It doesn't give an explanation of why or how. It just says stuff. And 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 if you're not if if you're not careful, you might mistake that like, well, that was God's will or that was something that God wanted or like God doesn't want men to have multiple wives. If you read the whole Bible, the New Testament and the Old Testament in a in a in a clear way, and in a synergistic way, because the Bible is synergistic, it plays off of itself. You know, one book, there's 66 books in the Bible. One book plays off another book. They all kind of co-inhere. They all kind of coexist, and, and, and uh, they all kind of complement each other. If you really understand the Bible, you realize that they, they all complement each other. Not one book is just random or a miss from all the other books. They're all part and parcel of the story of God. And many things happened that were not of God, particularly in the Old Testament, many things happened that were not of God. And sometimes there's no explanation. Or sometimes you know you, you think, well, why didn't God come in right away? It, it, the Bible just didn't mention it. It doesn't mean God liked it. If you understand God, then you know that he's righteous and you know that polygamy, polyamory, non-monogamy is not is not of it's not righteous it's not of it's not of god if you read the whole bible it was adam and eve it wasn't adam eve sarah jessica tiffany you know becca etc cetera, etc cetera, right it wasn't you know adam and his his multiple wives it was just adam and eve that's what god created and that's what god ordained M marriage between adam and eve and everybody else is supposed to get married according to god right that's morality so how are you going to have a guy who's clearly living a, an immoral life a, he a hedonistic life etc and then also saying oh yeah i'm moral and i'm all about god i mean like it just it doesn't work it doesn't make sense and you know, I'm a Christian and, and I got no beef with anybody from, from any other religions, but I know the Bible and that's what I believe. And so I'm not dissing anybody if, if you want to live your life that way. I'm just saying this is my opinion from what I know about God, from what I, what I know about the Bible. That's not okay in God's eyes. Okay. So, you know, you know, some other book might say something different. It is what it is. It's not, it's not my, uh, position to, point fingers at any any other religion or any other book but i but i can just say you know for what from what i believe it's just it's just not uh that's not the way to do it so it, you know at any rate it, it's just an interesting psychological sociological phenomenon to watch this guy and he's probably going to go down i would think unless that government really is corrupt unless there really is crappy evidence unless they find some loophole that gets him out. I can't imagine him not get not getting uh, convicted for this because he admitted to it. When you have tape of, of yourself admitting to it, and it's it's not the matrix. I mean, it might be the matrix, but I doubt it. I, I don't think so. To me, part of his sociopathy is pulling stuff out of thin air. I think the guys, I think there really is the matrix and there really is elites behind the scenes like he's talking about. But I think they're just laughing at the guy. I think they have nothing to do with any of this, really. Be why? Because he, he mentioned something about COVID or he mentioned something about Greta Thunberg. I don't think so, man. I, 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 I There's nothing that, to me, that's really, he said, that is really damning you know, against them. I think he's just pulling this stuff out of thin air to make himself seem like a, a, seem like a victim, seem like an oppressed person. I think they really are influential and they really do intimidate people and they really do, uh, you know, social engineer our society, etc. But I think they're just like, Tate, who? Uh, you know, I, I don't think they re they're really too bothered about him. You know, like, like, what has he really done? He's influenced, he, his argument is that he's influencing men to be better, etc. I mean, sure, that, that that's going to hurt their plans to to destabilize you know certain areas you know but but i i don't 
I don't see it. I, I, I think he's overestimating his, 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 his influence. He's overestimating his worth to the world. Um, I think that people are, are more overweight than ever. I think people are more into video games than ever. I think people are more docile than ever. I think people are more into porn than ever, and Andrew Tate is not going to come around and fix the world. I don't think it, I, I don't think that they feel very threatened by him. It's just too massive what he's going up against. He's a drop in the bucket, you know. I don't think he's really influencing all the men around the world to really make a change, particularly because he's just kind of his his story. I think Jordan Peterson is, is more influential than he is by far. Um his story is his, his his brash arrogance is going to turn a lot of guys off he i i think believe it or not as popular as andrew tate is he's still a niche character he's a niche uh ro- quote-unquote role model a niche uh uh you know influencer i think people are just more you know, inter, you know, kind of like a train wreck or a car wreck. Like you just look, you're like, whoa, whoa, you know, what's that? I think he's just he's he's more of a shooting star than he is a a you know uh, main you know mainstay in people's homes as far as oh yeah you know you know you know when I want to find motivation or I want to learn how to live life I just go watch Andrew Tate like I don't. There's so much information out there. There's there's so many other people out there who are giving who are giving good information. I think if you're a self star, I mean, sure, maybe he's motivated some, some some men, but his first of all, his, his method and his approach is very attacky. He attacks people and, and and calls them names, and that's you know you win. You catch more flies with honey than you do with vinegar. You catch more bees with honey than you do with vinegar, or whatever, right? Well, uh, so. I don't think that he's he's going to motivate a certain type of man to be even he's going to motivate a certain type of arrogant man to be even more arrogant. He he's very popular with young men who are already arrogant, already jerks, and he kind of just makes the you know, if anything, he he really the impact that he has a lot is um I think he's influenced people to to be more you know, young men to be more into cars and fighting probably. But, I mean, you know, I'm not going to sit here and say that the guy can't motivate or can't help anyone or can't, you know, I don't know if he's a net positive for good. Maybe, he, you know, like he says, maybe, maybe he does, he's done more good than bad, but at the same time, you got to balance it out. And, it's, and even him saying that is kind of telling, I'm a net positive for good. Okay, well, you know, like, what are you balancing that out with the fact that you spent 10 years or however long doing cam girl work and probably still doing it and and um you know how much damage you've done there as far as putting that content out how many young men's minds you've corrupted and how many women you've you've used I, you know anyway so you, I mean, you you, you kind of get what I'm saying, but it's an interesting case study in like what women want because I still guarantee that many, 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 many women, very gorgeous, uh, beautiful women, really are attracted to Andrew Tate because he just has that arrogance. He has that bravado. He has that. He has. He checks off all the boxes. Even though I think one box that he he actually somewhat. Could, could improve on is his his, his clothes he kind of wears the same clothes over and over again which is odd um but and, and i don't even think he dresses all that well but but that's another story i mean, I mean that's kind of odd that's just kind of maybe neither here nor there it doesn't matter the guy's a gazillionaire so what does it matter if he, if he wears a, a kind of a weird uh what do they call it? A, kind of a kind of a weird uh, cotton sports coat or something. It's just it's such a weird. I'm not saying it doesn't look good on him, but at the same time, like it's this he wears it in like every interview. It's so weird, or a variation of it. But anyway, um, he he's he's very linear in his his clothing choices. But uh, but yeah, man, that's he, it's a weird. He's a weird phenomenon, and I think like. I mean, you know how my mind works is I don't know if I want to get into it, but you know, it's 
I look more at like the fact that this guy was able to come along and be that popular so quick in the matter of a couple of years becoming the most Google guy and the, one of the most famous people on the planet simply from using social media is very interesting. But it's because of his charisma, it's because of his solid iron kind of confidence slash arrogance, um, his belief in himself and his intelligence. And, but I'm not going to sit here and say the guy is not intelligent in a certain way. But it's funny how wisdom is not the same thing as intelligence. You might have somebody who's got average intelligence, but they're wise. And, and, and they've made a lot of mistakes and it's made them wise. And so they know what to say and what not to say at certain times. And I'm not saying that any, I mean, you know, anybody can say dumb things at certain times. But at the same time, like, what it, what to me, what Andrew Tate did was he where he majorly messed up was he dared he almost dared the matrix to attack him he he was so overly confident he was so br- brash that he he just he 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 overspoke he he spoke too much and he and he, and he snitched on himself and he and he, he incriminated himself by how much he talked right and, um, you know, he, if he was smart and he was wise, he wouldn't have went about the way that he went about it. But I think a lot of the reason why he did it that way was because he knew that if he was going to get famous and hold the frame of people's attention for as long as he did, he had to be that shocking. He had to be that brash and that uh, cocky and arrogant and outspoken with things that people didn't necessarily want to hear and he had to keep going with it I think that's kind of what he felt and I think it worked but at the same time it backfired you know and he admitted too much and and he said the wrong things and you know I think it's probably he probably incriminated himself and I, I think that I would be surprised if he didn't go to jail for what he for what he did. I don't know. It's interesting, you know. And I hate to even talk about that kind of thing because I don't want anybody to go to jail. And I, and I hate the fact, you know, that even jails exist. It sucks. And it's like I just want God to come back and end this age so that we can just, you know, move on from all that crap. But it's you know, it's you know, it's a spectacle. His life is a spectacle, and um, you know. He, you know, in, in, you know, in in a way, he's Dan Belzerian, but also in another way, he's kind of like Bad Barbie. He's kind of like Bad Barbie. Bad Barbie was a spectacle, and that's how she got famous, and now she's rich because of it. And he turned himself into a spectacle. So he's kind of of that school of people who are shock value. That's what they have. They have shock value. It's just he he's done it in an intelligent way in the sense that he speaks with intelligence and he's very well spoken, very well read but he's still using shock value and at the end of the day, shock value is dumb right? People look at Bad Barbie and they're like, ugh, you know but she's a, she's like, she's a she makes millions of dollars every year maybe even every month she makes millions of dollars it's a weird, sick world that we live in now, right? So here's somebody Andrew Tate comes along and he just meteoric rise because he combined his intelligence with shock value but he also buried himself in a way and we'll see what happens and you know I don't want anybody to go to jail I don't don't wish I don't hate on anybody I don't wish harm to anybody I would just say he's not a moral person and as I said earlier when I was talking about the the you know the pimp game I think a lot of the women are complicit I think the women are not forced to do what they do in many cases now you you call it the lover boy method and that's coercion you could make that argument, and I would probably agree with that to some extent. But I still think that, you know, so so what that would mean is that women don't have autonomy. What that would mean is that women uh, don't have responsibility for their own actions, right? And, and, and what I see, what I've seen is like ex-prostitutes or ex-porn girls 
try to play victim and act like, oh, well, you know, I was being taken advantage of. I, I was coerced. And, and then they do they use that as a trick to get out of responsibility and get out of accountability, right? So I do think him saying, you know, you know stealing their money to where it's not 50-50 is uh, fraud and is coercion, but... So I think they might get him on that, but um, you know, uh, you know, did he did he do an international crime ring? I don't know, man. That's that's not that's I don't know, you know. But I I, I think that if if he had a legit cam business, it was all in the books, and these women were doing it willingly, then probably not, right? So that's that that's uh, on them, I would say. So. The red, you know, I don't, I wouldn't agree with these feminist women who say that, you know, he's a, he's a trafficker or whatever, in the sense that he's not forcing them to do something they don't want to do necessarily. I think these women, you know, you're, you're, you're complicit if you, if you choose to do that lifestyle, you want to do it to some, to whatever extent. Are they doing it to please him? I don't know, man. That's what, whatever goes on behind the scenes, and maybe they have evidence of that. Maybe there's testimony or evidence. I don't know, man. Like that's up for God and the judge to decide, but that's on him, man. That that that's the life he chose. That's that's the route he chose, and and it was a dangerous route, and he became successful at it. And it's just like anything can go, anything can can happen in this world, man. Anything, can, and it, particularly in this dark age, where you know you have so much porn out there, you have so much cam girl stuff. Guys are just getting getting rich and doing doing really dirty stuff man you know doing really seedy uh very degenerate stuff you know and making a lot of money on it but god's gonna come back and judge it all god's at the end of the day god's gonna come back and he's gonna judge the whole thing you know he's gonna um set it all right so God's the judge, you know, I'm not sitting here condemning or judging Andrew Tate, it's just a calm space, but it objectively, you know, you can't say you're moral when you do something like that, you can't say you're a role model when you do something like that, but again, I find, I find him, you know, his, his, his story interesting, particularly now when he's, he's going to court and charges have officially been filed against him, and you can start to see some cracks in his armor. And then from a psychological standpoint, you know, I took some, some courses in psychology. I took one, actually only one course in psychology, but I've studied psychology. You know, I've read a lot of psychology. I've read psychology books and stuff like that. And it's just interesting. It's interesting. Uh, you know, I took Psych 101 in college, right? But it's interesting. And then I took sociology as well. And so it's interesting to see, you know, how people behave under, under certain. And really, I think at the core of it all is, is just money. He wanted money so he would do and, and fame and, and the women and, and, and all the lust and the greed etc right and, and, and I hope the guy does have a spiritual path I hope he does find God in a real way and I hope he does help people you know it's like helping people is good regardless and but it's just interesting how somebody who could be that sociopathic who could be that uh, you know conflicted can also you know, have some good in their heart, or can also be so, you know, so influential, but it's, it's also scary, it's scary how influential he is, you know, and it kind of, to me, it's a prelude to the Antichrist, because the Antichrist is going to be that kind of guy, that kind of charismatic, but times 10, or times 100, times 1,000, or whatever, but it's just a, it's, it's a crazy world we live in, man. So yeah, that's that, but it's all, you know, from the female perspective, it's just like, how many women does he still get? How many women has he influenced, despite all the charges, despite this and that? You know, eventually, if if you fall down, people will leave you, and if he's really seeking God, if he's really trying to be a man of God, eventually he'll have to come to Christ, eventually he'll have to come to, you know, to Jesus. You know, the Bible says, every knee shall bow. Every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord, that Jesus is God. Eventually, everyone will, period. So, if, you know, he's really earnestly seeking God now in his, in his youth, while well, he's still got some youth left, hope, you know, uh, then God might have to remove all that from him. 
and, and someday maybe he'll really get something of God, you know, in a real way, not just some out, weird outward religious crap that he claims he's following, which if you really watch his lifestyle, he's, it doesn't seem like he's really pursuing God very much. You know, he's still... Anyway, I'm again, I don't want to judge the guy. But it just... You know, again, if, if you're holy, you, you know, it's like, hey, I got, I was wrong. I admit, you know, I got to take responsibility. Like, that's part of growing spiritually is, is owning up to your mistakes, owning up to harming others. And, and, you know, maybe he can't. Maybe he wants to, but he can't because he, he would incriminate himself or whatever, whatever. But... He could do things behind the scenes. He could, he could give those women their money back. But who knows how many dozens of women or hundreds of thousands of women he's taken advantage of. I don't know, man. Again, that's up to God to decide. I'm not trying to judge. and I'm not, I'm not here to... Just, just you know... Anyway. So, pardon it, pardon if I judged him. I don't, I don't want to... You know what I mean? But, it, but it's just, you know, objectively... Th through the lens of the of the onlooker it doesn't seem like the guy is very repentant or very pursuing of righteousness or pursuing of god or anything like that it just seems like he's trying to cover up his past dealings etc i mean i don't think i've ever even heard him admit that making millions of dollars off cam girls is immoral in and of itself i don't think i've ever heard him say that which any intel any rational relatively intelligent person would have to admit that's not a moral way to make money <laughs> so what does that have to do with God and you know pursuing of the, the, the pursuit of righteousness which should be what following God is all about you know what does that have to do with that anyway but from a hypergamous standpoint women still want him <laughs> women are still <laughs> women are still you know women love a guy like that particularly in, in today's day and age wow he's got everything he's got the money he's got the looks he's got the bravado he's got the fame he's got the adoration of thousands and millions of t 25 year old kids who, who want to be rich you know what I mean so that's very attractive to a lot of unwise women a lot of women who, who are not very mature but are, but are happen to be very attractive, right? So, so what does that say about young modern women? You know, what does that say about the world today? Well, maybe we're all learning from this. Maybe we all feel like we could do better. Maybe we all feel like Andrew Tate is a wake-up call. Andrew Tate, you know, and even Donald Trump. Donald Trump, Andrew Tate, very similar type personalities, in the sense, you know, their their rise to fame, etc., and their brash ways. What does that say about us? That that we can allow that these people to become so famous. We can allow these people to become. What does that say about our degradation? Or what does that say about the state of our collective morality? Or the state of our collective, uh, you know, social culture? Wow very interesting to think about man but anyway i'm gonna leave it there like like i said i'm not trying to judge or condemn anybody that's up to god god's gonna judge everybody according to their to their deeds so it says in the in, in the bible it says everybody's gonna be judged according to, to to what they did whether right or wrong it's right there in the bible man so god's the judge but at the same time we can we can we can speculate or i should say speculate we can we can form observations, <laughs> talk about it a little bit, but yeah, I said my piece, and and it's you know for me it's a little sad because yeah I don't think Hannah Tate's a role model. I don't think guys should be following him or, or respecting him or looking up to him or trying to be like him or anything like that. And it's it's sad because I hope a lot of these young kids don't get influenced to just like oh yeah now I'm gonna go. I'm going to try to make money the Andrew Tate way. I hope not, man. I hope maybe his courses work in his little Tate University. Maybe that works. I don't know. You know, maybe he really could have a real university or like a tech school or like, you know, teach kids. You know, he, he could take that money and invest it into a 
a legitimate university, maybe. I mean, I don't know how much that costs, but has he thought about that? Or, like, you know, you know, I, I, I always used to say if I ever had tens or hundreds of millions of dollars that I would buy land and I would build homes and I would house homeless people, you know, and figure out a way to make money off of it in some way that's sustainable to where these people could be cared for and things like that and it's crazy to me that we have the ability to fix something like homelessness or we have the ability to fix something like poverty but because of greed and because of control and selfishness these elites these millionaires these billionaires they don't want to do it they just got to figure out a way to make more money for themselves and so you know there's a lot of charlatans, a lot of snake oil sales, salesmen, a lot of grifters out here who are, who are saying everything but not doing doing much really behind the scenes. And that's that's up to, to God to decide. I'm not going to sit here and dig into whether his courses work or dig into whether he's actually practically doing what he says he's doing by giving you charity or really helping the world or whatever, whatever, like... God knows, man. I'm not. I, I'm not a detective in that sense. But I mean, I hope so. I hope he's helping people, and I hope people are being helped, and I hope people are getting out of depression, or getting out of their slump in their life, or getting out of being overweight, or getting out of bad mental spaces. And uh, and if energy help people, then then wonderful. That's that's all to the good. But anyway, I hope everyone's doing well. It's been Jay Lee, Northwest Podcast. Peace.